Good morning, Mr. Goodfellow. Good morning. Ha ha. Run. My window. Wretched children. They have broken the window of my shop. Do not worry yourself, Mr. Goodfellow. From such misfortune comes something good. Such accidents keep the industry going. Everyone must have a job to live. What would become of glassmakers if one never broke windows? But you are the glassmaker. This is an outrage. But what he says makes sense, Mr. Goodfellow. If bad things never happened, how would people find work? Why, for instance, if no one committed crimes, I would not have a job. Isn't it your job to chase after those hoodlums who broke my window? Um... Well... If no one got sick there would be no nurses. I can't imagine what I would do in the world where no one gets sick. How terrible that would be. Has the whole world gone mad? When old things are destroyed, jobs are created. Out with the old, and with the new. See? That is the sound of a new job being created. Um, I should go now. Now do you understand, Mr. Goodfellow? It is good to break windows, because it is an encouragement to industry in general. It causes money to circulate. Stop there. Your theory stops at what one sees. It does not take count of what one does not see. Who are you? I am Frederick Bastiat. The Economist. Never mind. What is seen in this case is that the window is broken, and a job has been created for the glassmaker. But what is not seen is that some other business lost a job, because Mr. Goodfellow could not buy from them. Industry, in general, has not increased at all. But in addition to industry, there is also Mr. Goodfellow, who is a member of society, too. Considered in its entirety, society has lost the value of one window. Destruction is not a profit. If the window was not broken, what would he have bought? We can never know what might have been. But maybe he could buy some more books for his library. Or, what I really need is a new pair of shoes. Precisely. So you see, because he must buy a new window from the glassmaker, he cannot buy shoes. The glassmaker gets more work, but the shoemaker loses work. I think you are mistaken, Mr. Bastiat. He must buy new shoes. It is a necessity. But he did not need a new window, until it was broken. Now he must buy both a window and shoes, so now there are two jobs while before there was only one. True. Now he must buy the shoes as well as the window. But if he had only needed to buy shoes, he could have bought the shoes and something else. The only thing we know for sure is that Mr. Goodfellow labored to get that money. People do not labor for the sake of laboring. They labor because want to be able to afford some satisfaction. Thus, it is most probable that Mr. Goodfellow would have spent that money on something. But what if for some strange reason he chose to not spend his money? What if he is a miser who never spends a dime he doesn't have to? Money needs to circulate. Even in this case, society would not be worse off. Mr. Goodfellow has labored to get that money, meaning he has done a service to society. If he chooses to not spend the money, then the rest of society will never need to return the favor to him. He gives society his services, and asks nothing in return. I challenge you to show that society is made one bit worse off from this. Well, I think that government must create jobs for us. Like with the Cash for Clunkers program, where government gave people a rebate if they bought a new car. That made jobs for auto workers. Yes, and I just love my new car. Government stimulus does increase demand for the businesses that government is encouraging. That is what is seen. But this only takes demand away from other businesses. That is what is not seen. For instance, the government program required the used cars to be destroyed. This did indeed create more demand for cars. But some taxpayer had to pay for that, and now they will have less demand for something else. 
society lost some cars that were still useful. That is all. This is just theory. So is your stimulus. But what of that economist at the New York Times? He has said that world wars, terrorist attacks, tsunamis, nuclear accidents, and alien invasions, while tragic, still have a small bright side because they create jobs. Are you saying he is wrong? I am sorry to upset his ingenious calculations, so far as he has passed the spirit of them into our legislation. But I beg him to begin again, and to take into account what one does not see alongside of what one sees. If, after a disaster, one thinks that the labor that will be encouraged is a silver lining around an otherwise dark cloud, one would be mistaken. That labor is the result of people desperately rebuilding their lives. It is not a silver lining. It is, in fact, a part of the cloud itself. Any theory which misconstrues this fact needs to be seriously reconsidered. You may be right for this simple case. But I still think Congress needs to do something to create jobs. No. If one goes to the source of all of the arguments that are now favored in Congress, one will find there this vulgar saying, what would happen to the glassmakers if one never broke windows? Ha ha. As long as the New York Times is in business, I will be too. I think I will go write a letter to my congressman. Tell him to start a new program that will give people a rebate on a new window if they agree to break their old window. I will call it Smash for Cash. What is wrong with the world, Mr. Bastiat? Why do people forget what jobs are for? Why do they demand jobs from Congress, instead of demanding goods from businessmen? Why do they worship the means, and neglect the ends? Because they only understand what is seen, and have not learned to see what is not seen.